in the near west side of Chicago, you find a Ukrainian village of Chicago that is a home of 15,000 ethnic Ukrainians. You know why I'm here today? It's not only because I wanted to try some Ukrainian cuisine, but the real reason is that I wanted to consider what I as a Buddhist can do to restore peace in Ukraine locally. My personal relationship with the ongoing Russian-Ukrainian war is a little bit complicated. I feel for Ukrainian victims, but I also feel for Russian victims. As a Buddhist, my goal is to be compassionate to both sides, not to just one side, but perhaps saying both sides by making a hard and fast conceptual dividing line between Russians and Ukrainians is nonsense. We are living in the world of interdependence of all beings. But the question is, how can we conceptually go beyond this conventional distinction? I believe the most effective way is to experience their culture and meet people from both sides. One of my best friends is Russian. She listened to me for hours when I almost failed to pass my PhD exams. 20 years ago, my Russian host family in Eugene Sahlinsk was so kind and taught me what the heartwarming hospitality looks like. But I have no Ukrainian friends, so I decided to go make friends with them. It's traditional Ukrainian. Yeah, yeah, it's traditional okay. Ukrainian bird. Okay. And this is a pork, it's our traditional soup, I could say. The green onion in it? No, 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 you can eat like how, how you eat. Just You can add uh, this. Oh, okay. This and this. And this is so good. Oh, this <laughs> is the Ukrainian bread too. The super friendly waiter person said she moved to Chicago a few months ago from Ukraine, which was slightly before the outbreak of the war. Here are pierogi and bowls, soup. I didn't know part of the traditional Ukrainian cuisine shares what my Russian host family cooked for me a day after a terrible hangover from vodka when I suffered when I was in Russia. How do Ukrainian artists express their feelings about this war? Out of curiosity, I went to Ukrainian Institute of Modern Art. This museum currently has two exhibitions. One is contemporary art and the other is a special exhibition by local Ukrainian artists expressing their emotions and hopes for peace in Ukraine and the world. But my video captures only a little part of this rich artistic museum. Perhaps does your local neighborhood have some facilities tied to Ukraine? Let me know your local experience in comments. I was stuck, struck by the fact that many, the, many of these arts were not expressing anger and blaming and so on. I mean, some of them were expressing that. I mean, it's of course understandable, but at the same time, many of those messages include the messages of hope, messages for the peace. And afterwards, I had a nice long conversation with one of the curators of the museum. And... Um, and we ended up conversing about what, how what we do today really has some consequences in the future generations. Like, you know, some pol political leaders who are hungry for power had an abusive relationship with their parents sometimes, not all time. If that is causal connection, hunger for the power, and then what we should do is to stop, you know, abusing people. You know, I wouldn't say like, well, it doesn't matter to me because I'm not abusive. Well. But at the same time, the abusive aspect of my behavior is embedded in many activities of my everyday life. For instance, like, as I said in the last video, when I'm in a rush and my kids are not obeying me, I tend to, you know, use force. That's part of the violence. Unless I overcome that temptation of using my force, forceful words, forceful to put them on their lap, and change their clothes, and then put them, you know, uh, send them to a school or something like that to be on time. Unless I stop using force, the future generation will not see peace. So it, the, my point is that even though the Ukraine-Russian war looks distant physically from us, because many of us are dis, phys, geographically distant from the war zone, but at the same time, as I talked with her today, like one of the curators of the museum, really we, what we can do, we wage peace in each place of our local community, local family, local office, local, you know, grocery store conversation with the cashier or something like that, at the market or any, anything. How to smile at the stranger. I mean, that's a little, maybe, maybe a little bit strange, but you know, how to respond to an email to your customers, showing an understanding of their point of view rather than inserting your own purposes only. So that small kindness really matters. That the seed of Buddhahood, the seed of the Buddha land is really the peace land for our humanity. That's something we can start. 
locally in our everyday life. To me, that's why I learned Buddhism and have a discussion with, with you guys. How will you start showing your compassion and kindness to others and yourself in your everyday life so that you can join the cause of waging peace in our society? War and conflicts are happening around the world. Ukrainian Russia and war is one of the major crises that we are facing right now. So, with that note, thanks for watching. See you next time.